Um, Dr. Kirk is the director of the Counseling Center, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about those services. And I would say I am so delighted that Kyle is working for you all and with you all. If I don't mention the internship, make sure you prompt me on that. Okay. Right. We've already got some students that are interested. All right. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon. And congratulations on being accepted into this program. We're taking a big step into a very rewarding and uh, oftentimes challenging, but more times reporting profession. We do offer counseling here on campus for our enrolled students. We have on staff, there's myself, I'm a licensed professional counselor, don't boo me, I'm an LPC. Also have another LPC, Aresh Asadi, and then we have two social workers, hygienist Ukana K, and then our newest hire, uh, Kai Kabayais. Say that last three times. And you sorry. say it correctly. Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, as well, and the model that we uh, work on, I guess our values. Basically, our values that is on the web page out there: safety, support, and empowerment. Safety, support, and empowerment. Our whole focus is to work with students that are here, as an enrolled student, to help them figure out issues, help them figure out coping strategies, and do whatever we need to do to help them stay enrolled and complete their degree and just uh, meet their goals. That's what we're about, that right there. Um, I'm oftentimes amazed at the number of folks who don't really even realize that we have counseling services. Um, one thing I, I know this probably doesn't happen in social work, but oftentimes with uh, uh, LPCs, there will be people who will actually get out into the field and get to practicing, who've never sat in the other chair, who've never actually come in for therapy themselves. They've been on, they want to be the therapist, they don't necessarily have to sit on the other side of them. This would be an excellent opportunity for those of you who want to take advantage of that, to utilize our services. We work under the uh, brief model. Basically, we're trying to uh, limit folks to no more than 10 sessions in a semester. Luckily, we're very, very fortunate in that if you come to see us, we can generally get you in to see us within a week. So we're very, very fortunate. Part of the reason, though, is because of the interns that we do. So I would encourage you to come see us if you want to See what it's like to sit on the other chair. The other part too, though, oftentimes those of us who get drawn into this profession, there's some reason, some rationale, somehow or other, there are things that we're trying to deal with or those types of things. And so we figure out, we'll, we'll go get educated about it, then I'll figure my way through this thing. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. I do know probably one of the most positive things I ever did in my life is before my wife and I got married, we went for uh, premarital counseling. The reason we did that is uh, her dad had been alcoholic. So we went basically to fix her issues. <laughs> her problem. I mean, I didn't have any issues at all. So we were going to fix her so she wouldn't screw up our marriage. <laughs> so. This going to work? How long is it going to no, she's heard this before. Yeah, so anyway. um, the thing about it was, I'm sitting there for those, for those four sessions. I learned so much about myself. It's almost like this light bulb. I thought, what a neat way to, help, to, to, to live, to work, to help people sort of figure themselves out, figure out better ways, healthier ways to live, and to, again, put in good coping strategies. So who married? 34 years, this no that's 34 years. So, evidently, you know, uh, she learned a lot. <laughs> she learned a lot. But, again, that whole, that whole experience of sitting down, talking about things, expressing this, this magic of, of therapy, somehow or other, talking to somebody, expressing those emotions, that's the thing that does it. I mean, like, there's meta-analysis all the time done 
of counseling theories and which particular one is going to be more effective, CBT, the person center, the DD, whatever, you know, those type of things. The thing that always comes out is a relationship with that therapist. That seems to be the thing that is the important factor. And actually, let me tag on to this. You know what the most, single most important factor in student success is? Okay, and my BSW students have heard this, so you guys can't answer. Single most important factor in student success? The relationship with a single faculty member. Mm -hmm. So find a faculty member, and it should not all be me. <laughs> find a faculty member. So the relationship in higher ed, and the relationship in the counseling therapeutic relationship both play a very key role in whether or not people are successful in achieving their goals. It's not a coincidence. No, it's not. It's all relationships. It's all relationships. So, again, we are located in the Student Services Center, uh, Suite 118. The web page is out there. It's real easy to get an appointment with us if you need to come see us. Some other things I do want to uh, touch up about this is that uh, we also do an awful lot of programming. Um, in October, right back, it's coming up on October the 3rd, we will have a, a depression screening. We always partner with uh, SSW, student, uh -huh. student Social Work Organization. Yes. Yep. We always partner with, and I sent an email to Elizabeth this morning asking us. So October the 3rd, we'd like to have y'all come help us with that. We use the PHQ-9 and do a depression screening here on campus. Very, very good practice. We will also have several things going on during the month of September. We will have, a, we used to have a concentrated suicide prevention week, but we were going to spread it out through the month and we'll have all things on how perception can be skewed, brain games, uh, a mindfulness uh, session that will be out on the mall. Uh, so you'll, you'll be seeing more information about that. And then at the very end, we'll be have a uh, depression screen in October the 3rd. Also, in the spring, again, partnering with SSWO, we do an eating disorder screening as well. That, uh, uh, that group always comes and helps us uh, with. Uh, other thing, too, there's an organization that we are part of, that we are the, the faculty uh, advisors for, called Active Minds. Active Minds is an organization that basically is student to student promoting talking about mental health issues and help seeking. But I'll provide you more information about that. Uh, so if you look at that organization, it'd be a great one for y'all to join. Not a whole lot of time commitment on that one. It's a good organization to be a part of, and you can do some good with that. And finally, one of the reasons I said that we don't have wait lists, we're, we're very fortunate, is that we have a really robust internship program that is uh, Thanks to the uh, former director, Mike Wingfield, who's also a graduate of the uh, MSW program, um, he put in place uh, a grant for us so that each fall and spring, we can we bring on an intern, well, an intern second year for uh, uh, social work for uh, to intern with us. I guess it's what, 24 hours a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And for each semester, there's a thousand dollar stipend that goes with that. We also generally bring on a rehab counseling intern as well at the same time. Um, like Reed, my my background is uh, rehab counseling. That's what my doctorate's in. And uh, our intern, it is an outstanding place to do an internship. You get a cross section of everything you're going to see in any agency out there, virtually anywhere. You really. Because we see everything from Johnny and Susie broke up to test anxiety to serious issues with anxiety and depression. We generally probably, probably hospitalize four to five students a semester simply because of suicidal ideation, those type of things. And you get to work with this, this myriad of, of, uh, of clientele out there. You really, really do. And especially with the social work which is really great because since you've got the fall semester and then the spring, the time they hit that spring semester, they're Cadillac. I mean, they're, the, they're really, really good. Great. They really are. Kai Kabi Ice, I just like saying the name, but basically uh, we hired, she was our very first social work intern that, that I had since I've been director. I think I've been here eight years. So 
And then uh, she went away, did some other things, and then we had this open, and she came home. <laughs> so we're very, very glad to have Kai here with us. And she's leading a mindfulness group. Yes. She's, weekly? Yes. That's so going to be on Wednesdays, uh, noon to 12.45 at DSC 201T. I'm almost positive. Yeah, so for those of you all that are around, if you have me, um, if we get a critical, if you have me at one o'clock and we get a critical mass, we, if, if we have enough people willing to go to that group, we might even be willing to start class late to facilitate you all going to that group because we're going to be doing some mindfulness stuff in my diversity class. Right, Mike, don't tell Kai she needs a larger room. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah, so <laughs> also, Kai speaks three languages. English is her third language, Portuguese is first, Spanish is second, so please pass the word because you don't have to be a native English speaker to use her services. True. One other thing, we've got some exciting opportunities that will be coming up in the spring. Counseling Services is partnering with the Arkansas chapter of uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. We're going to be bringing a conference to campus targeted suicide prevention for the there will be GTQ community. That will be in March. March 10, actually, because I've been in consultation with mm -hmm. them about that. <laughs> and then on April the 7th, we're actually going to have a community uh, out of the darkness walk, a suicide prevention walk here on campus, probably around the fountain. We've still got a little time to work out some things there. So the one thing we try to do, the reason we try to do programming and get out there, yes, we want to educate. We want to uh, help folks as much as we can. We primarily want, want our students to see us as people, to see that they can actually interact with us. There's a lot of mystery about it today. There is still in this culture the idea if I pull the handle on that counseling center door, I'm crazy. I'm psychotic. You know? We can go to the medical doctor. We can, they'll go to the medical doctor all day long. Uh, anything goes on. But if it comes to a psychological issue, there's still the belief in this, in, uh, in this culture, uh, in, to a large part, that either I'm a weak person, or I'm not right with God, or some kind of combination of those. So there's still an awful lot that we've got to fight. So that's one of the reasons we do program. Primarily, the reason we do program is to get out there and let them see that we are regular folks and we're easy to talk to. And if we can help you out with anything. Especially that internship. Make sure you come. And just one quick question, just to make sure. I know for the past two years, mm -hmm. we have prohibited the social work intern from seeing social work students mm -hmm. because of confidentiality. Is that still in place? Yes. So if you are concerned that you would be seen by one of your classmates or seen by someone you're going to see in the hall, you would not be able to see the social work intern. You could still see Kai, mm -hmm. but you won't see the social work intern that's placed there. And that's to protect your confidentiality. And actually the message from the student that's in the student handbook <coughs> written by Lou Ann Nelson, she was the student intern there last year. She was. Yeah. She was. And yeah. now she's working, I believe, is it Utah? I haven't had a chance to catch up with you. I haven't seen her since she got back from Ireland. Okay. So you come intern with us, you get to go to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so we do do some things to kind of and Mike does a great job with his team of protecting confidentiality and some of that. So don't worry about the stigma. Don't worry about, oh, I'm going to go spill my guts to my classmate because that's not going to happen. The other thing, too, is that there are no extra fees. We don't build insurance. <laughs> so coming to see us will probably be, if you come see us and utilize us, our services now for counseling, there will never be a time when it will cost you less or be more confidential than that. So, again, if I can help you out with anything, academic careers here. Don't hesitate to let me know. And again, congratulations again. You've really accomplished something by getting here. And I'm sure you're going to do great things. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Thank you.